Welcome to section 5.5, 5, adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Now what you're seeing today is going to directly correlate to what we've been doing for the last two days. Okay, we've done adding like fractions, we've been doing adding unlike fractions, and now we're just adding a step of having that whole number in front of the fraction. Okay, so the steps are going to be very, very similar. The first thing you're going to do is to rename the fraction if necessary. Now remember, renaming means you're going to name them with a denominator that is the same. Okay, so I have a 1 and 3 fourths plus 2 and a half. I found my LCD to be 4. So I'm going to rename 2 and a half by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 2. And I get 2 and 2 fourths. So my new problem is 1 and 3 fourths plus 2 and 2 fourths. So now we're going to add or subtract the fractions first. Okay, so 3 fourths plus 2 fourths is 5 fourths. The reason we do this is because sometimes you're going to end up with a mixed number, which is then going to have to apply to your whole numbers later on. And 5 fourths changes to 1 and 1 fourth when we convert it to a mixed number. So now I'm going to add or subtract the whole numbers. So I have 1 plus 2, but I also have 1 plus 2 plus 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, and that was from when we combined our fractions up here. So 1 plus 2 plus 1 is 4, and the 1 fourth is just going to carry on from the fractions we added prior to that. And then, if necessary, you're going to simplify your fraction, and that's your last step. Okay, so we're going to rename the fractions add the fractions or subtract the fractions first, then add or subtract the whole numbers, and then simplify the fraction if, if need be. Okay, so we have six examples we're going to do together. The first one is 5 and 2 eighths plus 3 and 1 eighth. And you'll notice tonight that sometimes we are going to be doing like fractions, and other times we won't. Okay, so when they're already like fractions, we do not need to get a common denominator. So I'm going to add my fractions together first. So 2 eighths plus 1 eighth is 3 eighths. Okay, I'm not going to change that into a mixed number or anything, so I'm good there. And then I'm going to do my 5 plus 3, which is 8. And then I'm just going to combine the two, and I get 8 and 3 eighths. I can't simplify it, so that's my final answer. Okay, so with like fractions, just leave them the same, leave them as they are. In this case, we added the numerators, kept the denominator the same, and added the whole number, okay, and then combined the two to get 8 and 3 eighths. So now I have 5 and a half minus 2 and 1 third. So for this one, I do need to get a common denominator. And a common number between 2 and 3, 2, 4, and 6. 3, 6 is the 6. Now, if you already know your common denominator, you do not have to show me that you're doing the multiples on the side. That's just an extra tool um, in case you for have forgotten what a common denominator could be. So you'll notice that I'm going to have to change both of these. So I have 5 and a half, which I need to change to 5, and something with a 6 at the bottom. 2 and 1 third, which I'll change to 2, and something with a 6 underneath as well. So I know 2 times 3 is 6, so I'm going to take 1 times 3, which is 3. 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm going to take 1 times 2, which is 2. So now I have 5 and 3 6 minus 2 into 6. So I'm going to combine my fractions, 3 6 minus 2 6. Is 1 6. And I can't reduce that, so that works out well. And I'm doing my whole numbers. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I have 3 and 1 6 as my solution. Always pay attention to the fraction. Make sure it does not need to be changed into a mixed number before you start applying those whole numbers um, that go along with the mixed number. 6 and 2 fifths plus 3 and a half. So once again, we want a common denominator, and a common number between 5 and 2 is 10. 
So I'm going to do 6 and 2 fifths, knowing I need to have 6 and something over 10. 3 and 1 half. And once again, I need to have 3 with something over 10 as well. So 5 times 2 is 10. So I'm going to take 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm going to take 1 times 5. Pens acting up again, which is 5. Okay? So I have 6 and 4 tenths plus 3 and 5 tenths. So I'm going to combine my fractions first. 4 tenths plus 5 tenths is 9 tenths. Then I have my whole number. 6 plus 3 is 9. So my answer is 9 and 9 tenths. That cannot be simplified. And there we go. Now I have 5, and, um, five minus 3 and 1 half. Well, just like before, we need to get a common denominator. And what I can do is I can change 5 to 4 and pull 1 out of it. Okay, so 4 plus 1 is the same thing as 5. Now this 1 I'm going to rewrite as a fraction, and the fraction I'm going to rewrite it as is going to have a denominator of 2. Now we know that 2 over 2 is the same as 1. And the reason we choose 2 over 2 is because 2 halves is the same thing as 1 whole. We choose 2 because I want a denominator of 2, so I can now subtract 4 and 2 over 2 minus 3 and 1 over 2. So I'm going to take my fractions, 2 over 2 minus 1 half, and that equals 1 half. Take my number 4 minus 3 is 1, and so my answer is 1 and 1 half. Okay, so when you have a whole number, you can take 1 away, change that 1 to a fraction with a common denominator with the other fraction you're trying to add or subtract. Make sure you put that number over itself because that represents the 1 here. Okay? 6 and 2 fifths minus 3 and 3 fifths. Well, this is a common denominator, but what I want you to notice is that when I take 2 fifths minus 3 fifths, you can't do it. You're going to get a negative number. Okay? So that's not, you're not allowed to do that. We don't want negative numbers. It doesn't make sense because 6 minus 3 we know is a positive number. This first number is larger. So what you're going to do is something that we call borrowing. And it's similar to the process we did before. You're going to take your 6 and you're going to change it to a 5. Okay? And it's going to be plus 1 and then plus your 2 fifths. So your 2 fifths just comes from my fraction. The 5 plus 1 is my 6 here. Okay, now what we've just done is pulled a 1 out. Well, we know 1 is the same thing as 5 over 5. Okay, 5 fifths is 1. So I'm going to add 5 fifths to 2 fifths, which is once again still part of my problem. There's my 5 on there. So 5 fifths plus 2 fifths is 5 and 7 fifths. So what I've done is changed two, 6 and 2 fifths to 5 and 7 fifths. Now a little shortcut that you'll notice is you'll see some people just take this and add or change the 6 to a 5 and add 5 to the numerator. So you get 5 and 7 fifths that way as well. That's fine. That's the same process as what we're doing down here. I'm just explaining it a little bit more. So now I'm going to take my 5 and 7 fifths, and I'll subtract that from 3 and 3 fifths. Okay, so 7 fifths minus 3 fifths is 4 fifths. 5 minus 3 is 2. And my solution is 2 and 4 fifths. That's my final answer. Okay. So the borrowing process, it might be smart for you to stop it, pause it, go back, watch that part again, because it's a little confusing, but as you get used to it, you're going to notice that it's going to become easier. And I know a lot of you have already done this in prior years, so this will hope, hopefully be just jogging your memory, getting you back to where you need to be at. 
and our last one, 11 and a half minus 7 and 1 eighth. So we still need to get a common denominator. So a common number between 2 and 8. Since 8 is even, you'll notice it's just going to be 8. So 8 is my common denominator, so I need to change 11 and a half only to a denominator of 8. We know 2 times 4 is 8. I'm going to do the same to the numerator. And 1 times 4 is 4. So I get 11 and 4 eighths minus 7 and 1 eighth. Okay. 4 eighths minus 1 eighth is 3 eighths. And 11 minus 7 is 4. Oops. So my answer is 4 and 3 eighths. And that can't be simplified. So we are done. Okay, so the only part of the section I would assume that you might be a little confused on is the borrowing. Like I said, go ahead and watch those two examples. Um, what are they? E, um, example E, and the one before that as well. Um, just so you can um, just see that process again. All right, we want to make it as clear as we can. Um, tomorrow, if you have questions in class, obviously, as you're getting, going through it, I'd be more than happy to help you as well. So if that's something you know you're going to struggle with as you're doing those problems in class while I'm teaching, or Mr. Holding is teaching, um, that would be a good time to raise your hand and ask for some extra assistance. Okay? As always, thanks for watching.